Hi guys and welcome to Bentomi's YouTube channel. My name is Alan Arvindan and first of all congratulations on completing the content till here. So in the past video, the last video of what we actually discussed is how to put that historical data of Kotal or Titan. And now what I do is I take you through my own research which I've actually done on Titan so that we put in those assumptions in the Kotal data. So let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to the session for revenue driver assumptions. I would probably classify this uh, session as one of the most important sessions out of all because all your model uh, is as good as your assumptions, right? So if enough research is not available on your financial model and specifically related to revenue, right? Uh, your model is as good as just a spreadsheet without actually any views. So let me take you through the kind of research which I have done for Titan, right? And which you could use as the kind of depth that you would want to target when you are researching on any other company, be it, you know, in IT, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's in oil and gas, whichever, but the depth has to be at this level, right? So let's first understand the various business segments of Titan, right? We cannot make the financial model on Titan unless we understand what it is actually trying to do, right? So at an overall level, we can obviously see that, you know, there is some revenue bifurcation of you know, various business segments and majorly we can see that it's jewelry. But at the base level, what is Titan trying to do? So what Titan is actually trying to do is trying to get into unorganized space, right? Or unorganized businesses in India and is trying to get a fair amount of share by being an organized player by dominating the segment, right? So you know, let's say, for example, jewelry is one of them because in India, jewelry before Titan got into it, it was fairly a unorganized segment, right? Because you've got uh, smaller players in each and every city and each and every district and each and every, you know, location, right? But none of them actually have a very large presence and, you know, actually dominating the space, right? And similar thing, it obviously it started with watches, right? Initially. Then, uh, you know, if you don't know about this, but actually Tanish, uh, you know, the brand which we know for Titan today was actually started with a gold watch brand. Right? And that's how they actually got into the jewelry segment, right? Uh, watches, they primarily got into this segment at the early stages because, uh, you know, the entire watch segment was dominated by either Swiss watches Japanese watches and there was very, you know, less presence of any Indian player, right? So they had to struggle a lot to get into the watch segment, which obviously is pretty small right now, right? That's primarily because they were able to, you know, get a huge amount of opportunity in the jewelry business, right? And then you've got eye care and other segments. In the other segment, these are new promising segments. For example, in the fragrance, accessories, right? Purses, watches, these are huge markets. Uh, you know, specifically if you talk about silk saris, right? Again, a very unorganized space in India. Uh, and people don't know what exactly they're buying, right? They just know, okay, we got to buy silk sari from Mysore. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, some specific type of brand they might know. But unfortunately, there's no player who can say that, okay, the quality is maintained. You know, you are pretty sure that, you know, the silk sari that you are actually buying is not good you know, or an adulterated version, low quality version of sari. So that's what it's trying to do in each of these segments, right? I wear specifically in the uh, testing space, you know, the uh, the medical, uh, you know, eye, eye uh, lenses and, you know, spectacles, they've been able to, uh, you know, gain a large amount of market share there. So overall, if you say what is Titan try to do, Triton is trying to get into the discretionary space and is trying to capture the organized, uh, you know, dominance by gaining huge amount of market share. Now, that's actually possible because, you know, in India, uh, you know, close to about five to six years back, there were two things which happened, which primarily changed uh, and probably created a huge amount of opportunity for Titan. Majorly, one is the GST implementation and second is the demonetization right so what happened is a lot of businesses were wiped out 
and a lot of businesses are getting wiped out due to the formalization of each sector specifically gst right so if you are not a formal player in this industry then more or less you know you're going to get wiped out right and that's what has been the trend and if you actually look at india specifically about 8 lakh companies or businesses actually shut down each year because of not being able to match up with the profit margins and not being able to compete with larger players right so that's what the trend is that titan is trying to capture right now if you look at the brand positioning right so now if that is what titan is trying to do then what kind of segments or what kind of customers are they trying to target right so uh you know although this might seem very simplified but you know let me give you also an input here that uh you know steve jobs once said right that people right so people if you ask people what they want right so don't they don't know exactly what they want so you know the reason why i'm telling you this is because that's where the strategy of titan comes in right so if you go and ask start asking people you know you know which brand do you like or you know what do you what kind of jewelry do they like uh it's very uh, difficult for the customer to talk about what he likes right instead it is very important to know how they use the product right so there's a big difference here right so a person might be using a product in a very different manner compared to what they say they might be using it for and that's where all these brand positionings that you actually see are not because uh you know uh, they've been able to go and talk to customers but the major game is data science okay so which a lot of content is not available on this but if you actually research on them they have a huge data science team which in fact goes to the level of design also okay so even the designs of various jewelry or watches or names or you know pricing all is done basis uh you know data science right so they are able to collect data so they try to get people on their platform and you know they try to observe and they run machine learning models and because of which believe it or not they have a 80% accuracy for their sales forecast now that also is possible because the data itself is also able to tell them where the shops need to come up right which cities which location right so that's the game behind titan at a very very you know birds eye level right so that is where cartlane also comes in because cartlane was actually not a titan company they actually acquired it right so it was an independent company which got into the jewelry business online specifically and this was you know generally at a less than 50000 rupees brand right it is a daily wear kind of uh, you know jewelry that people usually buy right so uh, and also a lot of interest in the uh, the the young population into studded studs right studs basically means diamonds so uh again this was started by shrinivas and gopalan and mithun satcheti uh, out of which mithun satcheti was actually into uh, you know design of uh, various uh, jewelry and shrinivas was basically a mba from ima with background in technology so when they combined both of designs and you know uh, you know technology they realized that if they are able to so so you know again a little bit of overview here is that the biggest problem that a unorganized player okay so unorganized player faces in the jewelry business is that they have to stock on a lot of inventory right so they have to actually you know do a lot of initial investment and hold it and that creates a lot of uh, you know overheads you know, because if you're holding a lot of inventory obviously your working capital is going to increase so that's where mithun sanjeeti came up with the idea that if we are able to somehow you know if we are able to somehow get the inventory to be lower right then your margins can increase right 
and basically if your margins can increase that also means that your pricing will be lower than your competitors right so that's where the cart lane business comes in and obviously you know titan uh, saw that okay this cart lane really fits in perfectly in the jewelry expansion and that's how they acquired cart lane so they have about 72% uh, stakeholding in cart lane which uh, we believe that mostly it will be similar uh, company might titan might actually increase its holding in cart lane further but at the moment it's about 70 odd percent right so it forms a part of its subsidiary company right so this is what if you want to understand in a very very you know visual manner this is how uh, the game plan of cart lane is right it is a very promising business uh, at the moment a uh, lot of stores getting almost 60 to 70 stores get added every year on cart lane and that is also because they also came up with a omni channel plan okay so omni channel means that what they understood is that uh, you know people may buy online okay but it might get influenced by just visiting a store right so you know people have different preferences people might say that okay i can buy online directly some people might say that okay i will probably want to see and feel the jewelry and then i will you know purchase online right so uh, and and majorly they are able to cut the cost because if you see here uh, in the in the sheet out here right you can see that for a regular pair it's the raw material cost that they have to incur then they you know get the finished product then there is a reseller you know the basic jeweler that you see in each and every city is basically the reseller then you also got to hold all this inventory that also increases the cost and that's because the final price finally goes up so they cut all that and this model is actually the dell model okay so dell computers did the same thing in the assembly of a pc right so they cut the middleman and it was on demand okay so as soon as the customer demands the jewelry in case of cartlane and you know analogy would be dell in case of their pc demand so if a person demands a certain kind of a pc then it gets assembled in the same way in case of cartlane also the same thing happened right so the customer does not get the jewelry instantly instead what he does is he creates an order and after the order is created then the product is actually made and it is actually sent to the customer in about 4 to 5 days okay but because of that they have 34% lower prices in spite of their making charges okay being higher than the competitors right so that's how they are able to maintain a lot of margin okay so this is again a small you can say a snapshot of how the benefit have actually accrued when cartlane and tanish join hands and in the sense that cartlane got acquired by uh, titan so a lot of synergies between businesses by the way you know uh, titan also has zoya mia tanish cartlane as the four major brands in jewelry business right and you can clearly see out here that since 2017 onwards on the right right onwards to march 21 if you see the cost of material consumed initially it was at 65.04% right and they've been able to get it down almost to 60% right so that's the cost synergies which cartlane bought in the business right now if you look at online jewelry uh, you know in terms of just cartlane itself the current market in 2019 was somewhere around 0.85 billion which is growing at a staggering 28% cagr and expected to be about 3.74 billion with only one more player in this business which also uh, by the name is also known by blue stone okay so that's a very small player so i'm just about 400 300 crores uh, at the moment but that is where cartlane has gained a huge market share in fact if you actually ask anyone in india uh, you know about uh, you know cheap jewelry or you know very affordable jewelry you are sure to get the name of cartlane to come right and we are very uh, you know encouraged by the growth if you see between fy 16 to fy 
the business has been growing at a staggering 40%. Right? That's due to happen because the market itself is growing by 28%. And when you combine the data science and the data analytics done by uh, Kartlin, obviously you're going to add some little bit of growth, right? So I'm just at the moment giving you, you know, background about the business, right? So this will help you in framing the assumptions of revenue growth, right? Another important thing is because they use the data mo science model, they are able to generate a 25% repeat business from their existing customer. And how, that is, how does that happen? So every time you actually go and purchase a jewelry set from Cartlane, whether it's a shop, whether it's uh, obviously online, if you're doing it, you must have already gone through the app, right? But if you, by chance, happen to visit the store, then they offer you a 15% discount, okay? Just to purchase the app from, uh, purchase the jewelry from the app, okay? Now, what that does is, that generates data, okay? And data is generated, and even if they are able to stay in your mobile for at least uh, a duration of two years, then they can actually write almost a 10,000 page on you as a customer so they exactly know when you actually purchase uh, the jewelry when your wife or girlfriend uh, needs to be gifted a jewelry set right what kind of designs you prefer and using that they're able to generate that 25 percent repeat business right so let's move on now let's look at the overall market size which will also give you uh, the important chart is on the left hand side this one right uh, so you can see here, if you look at the global level in online jewelry, penetration is at around 7.6%. Whereas in India, we are at just 1.2%. Well, as we have a huge potential to go on because believe it or not, in terms of the digital consumption, uh, if you combine probably, you know, a continent, our digital consumption is much more than that, right? Uh, if you look at online retail, if you look, in uh, in the global space is about 14 point percent and we are still at 4.6 there's a huge market to be pen penetrated going further right so what are the final assumptions of jewelry that we're going to take right what i mean what kind of growth are we going to assume is what we're going to discuss it right? that's what the summary is so as per their uh you know the uh, titan always comes up with a five-year plan right so what we are expecting is first is dominance in cost they use tech to understand right and they have a repeat business of 25 percent and excellent management right further which leads to we expect the management to open at least 600 tanish store clearly is a low on promised numbers right because the jewelry market itself is growing at 25 percent at a macro level so we are expecting almost 600 Tanish stores by 2027, right? So to summarize, we are saying 600 Tanish stores, which is very, very, uh, you can say, yeah, mostly I would say conservative number because uh, they promise lesser numbers, but they overachieve, right? We are expecting at least 395 online cart line stores, right? And we are expecting 300 MIA stores in the small store segment by FY27, right? So this is basis clearly on the five-year plan, which was shared in FY22, which we researched, right? Based on uh, all the data, which I gave you till now. And this is the uh, somewhat similar number that we are taking for the forecasted uh, period between FY23 to FY27, right? So close to about five years is what we are trying to forecast. Now, watches segment, watches and wearable, wearable segment, we are more bullish on the wearable segment, right? So it was a late entrant in the wearable segment, right? But, uh, you know, they're trying to get into the mid segment, okay? Somewhere around, somewhere around one, 2000 to 2K to 3K market, uh, wherein, you know, not a lot of players and whatever the existing players are there, they are mostly Chinese brands, right? And that's where, uh, you know, I expect that they will probably try to dominate this space uh, because, you know, not a lot of brands are trusted at this stage, except 
a few of them right and uh, if you actually go and see in amazon also you will see a uh, good performance of their uh, 2000 to 3000 rupees uh, variable segment right and uh, there is also this brand of uh, titan which is helios which is actually nothing but they try to get all these international brands all in one shop and that has also been growing at around 20% why or why uh, they've been adding almost 50 stores and they have a plan to add 50 stores every year up till fy 27 right now this is a new entrant the hidden gem is what i call it to dominate the sari business in india or you can say ethnic uh, wear right so in this this market is somewhere around 50000 crores which is a huge market right and largely unorganized so currently taneria is doing somewhere around 250 to 300 crores but they the at the pace at which they are growing and their plan itself is to make it to somewhere around 1000 crores by fy27 right so even a 10% market share in this 50000 is somewhere around 5000 crores in revenue but we have only taken 1000 crores okay and it's been doing pretty well so if you go to amazon or sorry google and look at their uh, you know store feedbacks you will get amazing reviews coming in right so that is a basic uh, you know understanding of the various revenue assumptions now when we actually look at the spreadsheet you will have more conviction and more background to put in these numbers right and of course this also will give you more clarity later on when we will be following this company you will also get a lot of clarity on how this uh, growth whether this is actually growing as per the initial plan and you will also be able to change the assumptions later on right so let's move into the next session i will meet you again and we'll put this numbers in the spreadsheet bye bye